Hey guys, this is Melanie Grant with CNM. Today we're going to review some of the different areas of radiology and pathology and laboratory coding. There's some unique areas in both of these types of fields. So this video will be focusing first on radiology as we look at our CPT codebook to see how it's organized. And we look at some of the unique perspectives that you'll see in radiology. So let's get started. So let's look first at some radiology reports related to the material that we're covering in our step-by-step -step medical coding. Here we have in the workbook, our radiology report number 45, which seems fairly simple when we first look at it. Things to keep in mind when you're looking at radiology is the terminology that you're looking at, where your location is, and some of the information like views, um, impressions or conclusions, and overall uh, purpose for the radiological service. In this one here, it seems at first glance not to tell us exactly what we're doing. We have an examination of the chest for chest pains and a portable chest AP sitting one view. And that can be very confusing to new coders. So the first thing to keep in mind is when you see a radiology report, anything talking about radiology is referring to a radio imaging or study. And when they have a simple chest examination, they're looking at this as an x-ray. In fact, most of your radiology reports are in fact x-rays. And you can look in your CPT code book by looking up x-ray or radiology x-ray, which will tell you then to look at x-ray. Once we've identified this, there's some other terms that we want to know. Portable chest is telling us the type of x-ray that's being done. AP is telling you the direction that the image is from, which is important in some cases with radiology. Most importantly though, for CPT coding is how many views we have. So AP is anterior posterior, meaning that the patient is being looked at from above or in front of them, going from the anterior through the posterior in the x-ray. This is your most common uh, type of view and what most people think of when they think of an x-ray machine. Comparisons were made with a previous study. That simply means that the provider was looking at the current x-ray and looking at a previous one done on a previous date. They're looking at this because they're trying to determine if there's any changes or differences between the previous date and our current date. And from this, they're able to come up with a conclusion that will help us identify a diagnosis code to list when applicable. Let's look at our next report here. Our next report set shows here radiology report, examination of biophysical profile. Clinical symptoms are indicating why they're looking at this particular patient, and then some of the information as to what the bio profile is. Again, this particular report is going to be done through an x-ray. And you may wanna find the terminology for biophysical profile when you're looking at the types of x-rays. We're gonna look at some of these together here in just a moment. The third one is more straightforward, CT scan, CT scan of orbits. Again, it's really important to keep your medical terminology fresh and know your anatomy as you're going through the sections of CPT coding. And when you're looking at a CT scan that of the orbits, that's going to be around the eyeballs themselves. And so this would be a simple CT scan or radiology looking at the orbits. MRA report of the brain. Again, this is telling you the type of radiology exam that we're doing. It also gives you in this particular example, uh, the breakdown of what MRA is representing. So this is your magnetic, magnetic resonance examination. And they're actually going into more specific as to what they're looking at. In some of these, it's going to be more important to look at the area as a generalized area, while others, you'll want the more in-depth detail that's being listed in this report. With radiology though, if you're just coding CPT, oftentimes there's a lot more information in the actual diagnosis that we won't necessarily need for our CPT selection. When we abstract, we wanna pull out the information that pertains to the code. 
Our last two that we're looking at are more specific radiology report for an x-ray of the abdomen single view. Findings will tell you information about this view. So this is a single supine view, meaning that they're laying down with their arms or chest up. I always like to think of the term supine and propine as someone who is holding a cup of soup and saying soups up versus propine where somebody is turning that cup over and saying I'm pouring it out. It's a silly way to remember it, but uh, fanatics are wonderful. And then the last one that we have here, number 50, and you can see there's also one for 51. We're just going to look at 50 today, is another radiological report of the left foot. Again, this is specifically referring to an x-ray if it's referring to radiology and it's not specifying a unique type. This particular exam is two views of the left foot. And if you read through the information through here, it should give us some information as to what the directions of those views were. So we can see there was a comparison. There were some findings. And in this particular case, they actually did not give us the views, which would indicate to us that most likely this code does not need to have direction uh, in order to code how many views. It is, however, important that if you get to the code information and there's something missing from your report, always plan on querying your provider. In our case, if you ever have anything that I've given you as an assignment that seems to be missing, consider me like your provider. You remember how to query from our, our class in 1015, where we talked about querying a provider. If you don't remember quite exactly the process of doing that, feel free to just ask me. I'm happy to answer any questions. So let me stop our view here and we'll take a look at the code book itself. And we'll start by recording our first image on radiology report number 45. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is our radiology section in our CPT code book. We can find here each section of the code book is going to have a series of information, including guidelines and a table of contents, which is the page I'm kind of showing here. Now, I know the image may be blurry, but you can follow along with me in the CPT 2021 code book that this is recorded for, or your current radiology code book, uh, I'm sorry, current radiology section of the current CPT book. So I am, page, I am on page 509, which starts with our radiology. And it's a couple of things we want to look at. So we'll look at our radiology report we talked about together just a moment ago. Uh, where we were looking at radiology report number 45 of the chest. But before we look at that, it's important to know how radiology is sectioned. And so we can see here, we have some guidelines for each of the different sections, all on page 512 through 513. And then you have each of the headings or headers for the radiology section. So the radiology section is separated into subheadings. Our first one is our diagnostic radiology or diagnostic imaging, which also pertains to your x-rays in most cases. This breaks from, from head to foot. And so you'll see anatomically how this is organized. Then you get to your diagnostic ultrasound. And again, you're going to be organized from head to foot. You have a separate section for radiological guidance. And in most cases, radiological guidance is going to be covered as part of a procedure itself or with procedures. We'll focus that on those here uh, later. You have breast procedures for mammographies, joint studies, oncology, nuclear medicine for diagnostic and therapeutic. And so you can see how those are a little bit different in how they're organized. From here, you also have some information that will help you when you're talking about radiology. So they've given us an image of the endocrine system to help us. And then we start with our 
uh, guidelines that apply to all codes in the radiology section. Most of this is pretty simple. It talks about uh, when to code separate procedures, when to code unlisted services, when you should have a special report, and information on supervision and interpretation of image guidance, administrations of contrast materials, and written reports. Now, one thing that's really important to identify when you're doing radiology is whether or not the provider is doing supervision and interpretation or just collection of an x-ray. So before we code anything in imaging, I wanna take you for a moment to look at the beginning of your code book where you can find our uh, most common modifiers used with CPT codes. And I'd like to point out the differences between modifier 26 which should sound fairly familiar to you. I'm trying to get that in focus here for you. So your professional component for modifier 26 versus TC, which is your technical component. And you actually will not see the TC here. And so it's up to coders who are coding in radiology to become familiar with that. TC is your technical component, which pulls in from your HCPCS modifiers in the HCPCS codebook. My codebook, unfortunately, is on back order, so I am not able to show that at the time of this video. However, I encourage coders to take a look at the different modifiers that come in from HCPCS coding, as they can be very beneficial. We also have in Appendix A, of your CPT codebook, your most uh, all of your modifiers, not just your most common. And these go in alpha, in numeric order, I should say, because they're not alphabetical. And you have more than just the term uh, 426 here. And so I want to get that a little bit in focus. So your professional component, which is the component, basically, it says cer certain procedures are a combination of a physician or other qualified healthcare professional component and technical component. When the phys physician or other qualified healthcare professional component is reported separately, the service may be identified by adding modifier 26 to the usual procedure number. Okay. And so we have that here. We also have Some of your HCPCS modifiers here for your category two modifiers on page 882 of the appendix A, which lists some of your HCPCS modifiers that are common. However, for some reason, you will not find TC in here. So it's important for coders to know when coding radiology that when you are coding the collection of a image, you want to code modifier TC. And when you are coding for the examination or interpretation and report, which is what we're doing when we're looking at our report here, this is going to be utilizing modifier 26. And so we can see here in our radiology report, there's no indication that this particular visit took the x-ray, just that there's a report. And most of the time, this is something you're going to know ahead of time in your office because it is uh, dis uh, something that is determined before you start billing. So if you're ever wondering as you're coding, as you're learning, how would I know this? It's something you will know because it'll be based off of how you're set up and one of the things that will be discussed in the very beginning of your job. So. We're looking at radiology report number 45. And I went ahead and flipped in my CPT code book here. Um, I'll show you in the small screen as we go along just kind of how we would pull this up. Um, so we have a radiology report examination of the chest. And so one of the areas you will find, let's see, does that help make it a little, oh yeah, much better. We can see here uh, radiology. So let's go ahead and just flip back over to that camera for a moment. And so we have our radiology, diagnostic imaging. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you can find something directly under radiology in the alphabetical. 
Other times you may have to go to the actual terminology x-ray. In this case, under radiology diagnostic imaging, at the top of page 1142, we have our chest, which reads to pages, uh, to code 71045 through 71048. There, that's better. So you can see here the chest for 71045 through 71048. At that point, once you've selected a code series, write these down. Don't just go, okay, uh, I'll remember that. Have a piece of paper where you write stuff down. Or in some cases, I like to tab my code book as I'm coding, or even just throw a pencil or a pen here, because it's going to be really important that you come back to this and you look up each of these codes that's listed in a series. And so I know chest x-ray is 71045 through 48. That doesn't mean that that's the only place it might be. Sometimes the terminology I'm looking at may put me in the right general direction, but it's up to me to determine if it's the actual correct code. So I'm going to flip into my radiology section and find CPT code 71045 through 1048. And I actually have that tabbed for us because I looked at it earlier. Some things I can take notice of when I get to this code. I'm in the radiology section. I can see it here as well as at the top of my CPT code book. I can see that I am in the sub section for diagnostic imaging and the sub subsection for the chest. There's also some in uh, section notes here. These aren't guidelines necessary, uh, but it's telling me about information for fluoroscopic or ultrasound guidance, um, as well as some of the codes that have been deleted. And I always like to read up and down or back and forth. And so I like to go to the beginning of the subsection or the section. So we're under radiology, diagnostic radiology which I found by flipping the page backwards or by going to the table of contents to find what is my main heading under radiology. And so I can look here and see if there's any in-section guidelines. That's important to note because if there are, they could apply to my code. At that point, I can just go ahead and flip back to the page I was on and say, would any of the guidelines under chest apply for my page? Uh, patient today. And so let me get that kind of straight for you. No, it would not. And so I, I'm not doing anything for fluoroscopic or ultrasonic um, imaging. So I want to continue on. And I can see here 71045 radiologic examination chest single view. This is pretty simple. It's very straightforward. There's a couple of notes and references about CPT changes done in 2018, as well as some coding references I can look at in CPT Assistant, um, the month and section that they were published in, and examples that I can find in um, radiology. And so these are additional resources you can look up. We have these resources in 3M. So that can give us guidance on what, when to use this code or how to use it in certain circumstances. I always recommend for new coders to use both 3M and the code book because this will help you in identifying how to code this. So I have 71045, chest single view. There's nothing else here that I really need to be aware of. I can see that this is read with a semicolon between the word chest and single view. And so, the indented codes underneath my standalone or parent code are for radiological examination chest two views, radiologic examination chest three views, and radiological examination chest four or more views. This is really important when you're doing radiology is to pay attention to how it's organized because it's different depending on the type of procedure you're coding. In this case, you would want to code only one of these radiology codes that best fits your uh, patient. However, if this said uh, four or more each additional, um, or if it had the words for each additional, sometimes you're going to code multiple units or multiple um, charges of this code. In this case, one view, two views, three views, and four views 
is pretty base, uh, pretty straightforward. I have had a lot of providers that will have five views and they will code both 71047 and 71046, which of course will ca cause a denial because four or more will include five views, six views, and however many views are necessary after the fourth view is taken. So for radiological report number 45, we can see exactly one code for the chest x-ray. We'll move now on to our next one for radiological report 46 and biophysical profile. So this is going to be a trickier one. If you're not familiar with the terminology, you'll remember earlier I said, um, take note of certain terms because it may end up being something important. We know this is something done through radiology and typically that means of the chest. So I kind of left it there and I wanted to get your brains thinking, what is a biophysical profile? So if you're not familiar with this and you started reading, the first thing I would say is stop right here. If you don't know what a biophysical profile is and you will come across many, many codes that you are not familiar with and it's okay not to be familiar with these, but it is important that you take a moment to pause and look this up. And so you would want to go into our good friend Google or preferably a medical dictionary. Um, I do recommend the Tabers for um, accurate information. Google is up to you to determine if the information you come across is correct. Right now, we're just trying to define it. So I put in the term biophysical profile and it pulls up right away to tell us that this is a measurement of a baby or the fetus during pregnancy. Okay, so this is a fetal uh, testing. And so when you're looking in your CPT, there's going to be a few different terms you might try to find that up under. After you identify this information, continue reading through the, the documentation here, and it will make a lot more sense. We're talking about gestational age. Again, if you're not familiar with that term, it's okay. Um, but don't continue coding something that you're not familiar with. And so look up your terms and you'll determine gestational age is talking about how long um, we are measuring the baby to uh, the mom to be, been pregnant and the gestational age is referring to how old the fetus is. And then in the biophysical profile itself, it talks about everything that's being reviewed and looked at. Um, the placenta is located along the anter anterior wall is heterogeneous. Um, and so on and so forth. And so you, they're going to go into all the findings uh, that were determined during this profiling. So when we come back then and we look at our CPT codebook, we want to keep a couple of terms in mind. Of course, we want to start at the term radiology, but we also want to keep in mind the term fetus, biophysical profile, and um, fetal for fetus, because sometimes fetal testing versus fetus, fetus testing would be an incorrect way of stating it. And I always say in the beginning to start in your alphabetical, um, in alphabetical order, it's gonna be the easiest way when you have multiple terms that you might be looking up. Okay, so I start here in my Bs. I start with biopsy, and bladder. And so I know it's going to be somewhere on page 992 if it's found. And I want to take you here so you can see how this would be looked at. So I come here in my biophysical and I'll notice that there is no terms here for biophysical profile, which means that this is the wrong uh, term to look under and I'll want to keep going. So even though the name of the test is a biophysical profile, it's not going to be found under the name. And so we wanna look instead, oh, I just ripped my book a little. We wanna look instead under different terms that come to mind. So biophysical profile is a type of fetal testing. And so the next term I'm going to go to is fetal. And then of course I'll end up at radiology eventually if I don't find it elsewhere. And so this is the point where I say the alphabet in my head as I'm looking for this term.
Okay, and I'm in the FIs, so I went a little too far, and that's okay. Brand new book, which means that the pages turn rather easily. Okay, and so now I found the term fetal. I have a couple of different types of tests here. I have a fetal non-stress test, um, antepartum, and I have some ultrasounds, uh, which are listed under non-stress tests. And so to find out if those ultrasounds would possibly be a correct code, I'll need to write them down or make note of them and go look at them directly. However, always read up and down. There is some fetal testing here at the bottom and I apologize for the uh, view here in the camera. I can notice here the different types of testing and I can look here and if I get to ultrasound, I'll actually see biophysical profile. And so that's for code 76818 and that comma means and 76819. And so I just wanna point out for a moment, the differences here between uh, two codes separated with a comma and two codes with a line between them indicating a code range versus two individual codes. So if this was just fetal, the code range 813 through 816 would include all codes in between, whereas biophysical profile is very specifically looking at 76818 and 76819. And so that's where I want to go. Would I have found that out if I had stopped with fetal non-stress test over here? Yes, because this was code range 76815 through 76818, which is one of the two codes that I had up above. And I know that it's my job to look at everything, not just the ones that I have written down. So I wanna put something here to mark this page. We use this little lipstick there. And I'm gonna look at 76818 and 76819. So bear with me for a minute while we flip there. I've already marked this page for us, but I want to take you in the same process that I would have otherwise gone. Okay, so remember, I like to look at the section and I want to pay attention to where am I? I'm in radiology, diagnostic ultrasound, which is a little different than diagnostic imaging. And so I flipped backwards to find that. This does have some what we call in section notes. And so I want to glance at all of these to see what might apply. Okay, so we have diagnostic ultrasound and the first uh, paragraph I'm on page 535 uh, goes in to talk about what is diagnostic ultrasound. Some specific information on code biometric pressure measurements. Um, information on the written report, what's required for that, anatomic regions that refer to complete or limited ultrasound notes. And so this is giving me some definitions. The next paragraph gives me the definition of elements for complete versus limited. Evaluation of vascular structures and some of the different information about that. Ultrasound guidance information and use of ultrasound without thorough evaluation of organs and those definitions. So that means that in the diagnostic ultrasound, any of these may apply to the code I'm selecting. And so when I come across some of the terminology that I need to understand where it says complete or limited, and I'm sitting here going, how would I know? That's how you would know. Okay, so none of that pertain directly to my biophysical profile, but I can come back if I need to. I see that this is again organized from head to foot. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go from head to chest to abdomen and spinal canal. And then when we get pelvis, we also have some references to obstetrical. Again, this is going to be important because I want to see if anything is pertaining to my patient. Um, the first one is talking about uh, code 76801 and 802. Now, mind you, I know that in my head, I'm looking at 818 and 819. 
but it's important to read through anything that's in these in section guidelines at least to skim through it and say is this pertaining to my patient uh, because it may uh, direct you to a different code especially when you're a new coder and you may not uh, get the right selection every time from the alphabetical i'll be honest even as experienced coders we don't always get the right selection from the alphabetical which is why we always code from the actual code itself not from the alphabet uh, look up in the back of the book okay so this is talking about number of sacs and fetuses so this is referring to when a patient is pregnant with multiples and our patient is not twins so we'll continue on 805 and 810 also include information pertaining to the number of fetuses Eight eleven, eight twelve, include all elements of codes in eight five, eight oh five, and eight ten plus the anatomical evaluation of fetal brain ventricles. And so this is just telling us that if you are looking at the difference between these two codes, um, one of them is more inclusive. And so you'll want to look at the definitions of the first to have everything for the second. That's really important when you're trying to determine if your code includes everything you need. The next part of the end section notes talk about the report uh, and what it should document. Code 815 is focused on a quick look exam. So if my patient was doing a quick biophysical fetus and it used the term quick look, I might want to look at that. 816 is a reassess fetal size and interval. Okay, and I know that that's not my patient, my code here, so I'm not going to get that one. 817, transvaginal obstetrical ultrasound performed separately or in addition to one of the transabdominal exams described above. So this would be a code used when one of the other services was done and this type of ultrasound was also done separately, not part of the same um, ultrasound. Okay. At that point, we begin our codes. And so I know that none of those in-section guidelines seemed to appear to go with my code. So I'm going to glance as I read up and down at the different types of codes here, but ultimately I'm going to 818 and 819. And so I have here 818 fetal biophysical profile with non-stress testing. And again, there's some uh, CPT changes uh, assistant and clinical exam examples that can be found for that. And on page 539 at the top, we have 819, which is an indented code. So that means I need to go back to my original code and read up to the semicolon, fetal biophysical profile, semicolon, without non-stress testing. And then there's also some references here about if this is the second and additional fetuses uh, to use modifier 59. So I, again, I don't have twins here. Uh, there's also a reference here that if the amniotic fluid index without non-stress test to um, use a different code. And so that's really important because that can help me out with determining. So everything I can do is now basically saying, okay, well, is this with or without a um, stress put on the fetus? And so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my screen here and look at my code descript, uh, operative report or radiology report, sorry. So when I go here, I want to look and see if this says anything about a stress test or if it's just a biophysical profile. So if you wanna remember the golden rule, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. And so what we're asking is, is it with a stress test? Yes or no? If it's not documented as with a stress test, then it is not with a stress test. And we want to use without non-stress test. And so we don't have anything documenting a non-stress test here. And so therefore the answer is that it is without a non-stress test. And that will take me back to code 76819, which reads description from the uh, parent code or standalone from 76818, fetal biophysical profile without non-stress testing. 
Okay, so let's look at our next one for CT scan or CT of orbits. Again, we wanna start with some of the terminology that this also identifies as. And so CT or CAT scan, orbits or eyeballs or sockets. And so we wanna keep all of those terms in mind as we start to look up our procedure. Now, one thing you'll notice if you go to radiology, and I actually closed out of that, but let's go ahead and look at radiology. So when you go to radiology, like you do with x-ray or diagnostic imaging, you're actually going to determine that there is no radiology section for CT scan. And so we can come here and we can look at this. Radiology, bone and joint studies. Now there is computed tomography here, which is what CT stands for but it's only listing one code and that's for bone and joint studies, not for a CT scan of the orbits. I can continue to look through my radiology section and I'll notice that there is no orbit listed here, no CT um, specifically, although there is a follow-up study and so if I'm looking here as my first area, I'm not going to get very far. I can find radiological guidance with CT scanning and other areas, but this is only gonna put you in the generalized area for a CT scan and that's not where we wanna go. So instead, start with a couple of different terms. We're going to go backwards for a second, and I want to point you out uh, with some of the areas of the body, you will find them in the CPT book. And depending on the type of procedure, you may find them uh, listed here. In this particular case, we can find CT scan in code 70480 through 70482 listed here. This is really nice because it gives us a direct reference to the CT scan of the orbits and the code range, which is fairly small. There's other ways you could have gotten to this as well. I could have gone directly to CAT scan, at which case your CPT code book is going to help give you guidance into finding that. And so it's going to say see CAT scan or C CT scan. And so oftentimes a CT scan is commonly referred to as a CAT scan, and that's not going to help get you where you're wanting to go. So you'll want to go to CT scan instead, which you would find on page 1016. Now you'll find all of your CT scanning here, not just the orbits or just a reference to go elsewhere. So you'll want to come through here um, and you might even find um, difficulty in finding the code, which is listed down here under unlisted ser services and procedures without and with contrast, as well as up here for services with contrast. And so the way this is going to read is you have CT scan with contrast orbit, and that gives you a code 70481 or CT scan, nothing under guidance, hard optical. You'll find it again when you get to unlisted services. And so unlisted services and procedures uh, right under that, CT scan without and with contrast. So those are two separate ones. Make sure you read that a little separately. Orbit 70482. Then you also have CT scan. Continue down the invisible line here until you get to just simply without contrast, orbit. 
70480. So you can see how this might be a little harder to go for 70480, 481, and 482 than if we had just gone to orbit CT scan. So I'm going to look up that code now, 704. And remember, we want to put something here to mark it. I already have a little tab, so I'm good there. OK, so I'm going to flip over in my radiology section to 70480, 481, and 482. Okay, so one thing I'll take note of, I'm in the radiology section, diagnostic radiology and imaging. I'm starting with the head and neck, which is where the orbit is. And I'm starting with 70480, 481, and 482. And one thing I'll notice off the bat is 481 is an indented code, 482 is an indented code. And so the standalone code or the parent code for all three of these is computed to uh, 70480, which reads the compute, computed tomography orbit, stella or posterior fossa or outer, middle or inner ear. There's a lot of ors there, which means it can be any of this section that is referencing. There's my semicolon, my first code without contrast material. That entire definition for 70481 would then read computed tomography, orbit, stella, or posterior fossa, or outer, middle, or inner ear with contrast materials. And the description for 70482 would subsequently read as computed tomography, orbit, stella, or posterior fossa, or outer, middle, or inner ear without contrast material followed by contrast material and further sections. So that's a lot of information to look at. So I will want to then go back to my um, note here to say, well, did they mention anything about with, without, or without, and then with contrast? And this is really nice to look this information in your coding book up first before you go into the code itself. And so I can come over here. I can see CT scan of the orbits due to left eye pain, um, uh, CT of orbits and axial and coronal planes without contrast. That's really important there. So there's without contrast. Now keep in mind, I wanna look and see if there's any with contrast after. Patient was vomiting, therefore contrast was not given. So at this point, there's absolutely no contrast. And I can go back to my code book and say, which one of those was without contrast? And it's actually the first code that we had listed here, 70480. Okay, so now I'm ready to continue on and look at my next report. For the rest of the two reports we're looking at today, let's go ahead and pull these up in 3M and see some of the differences in how we pull these up. I'm going to share my screen again. And we'll be looking now at MRA report number 48. This report here is an MRA of the brain. There's clinical information that's given and some of the specific details of the different arterio arterial um, Vascular, vascular structure uh, that's reviewed during this report. So in 3M, I wanna go ahead and use my resource to pull this up. And again, I recommend that all coders use both 3M and your CPT code book to see the differences and find a method that is easiest for you. When you find the method that's easiest for you, always use that as your verifying method and code in both to verify your procedures. So I went ahead and I hit procedure. Let me go back here and just kind of show you what I was doing here. So I like to start a gender of other because it doesn't identify male or female when I'm looking up specific codes. I choose the age 33 unless a geriatric or pediatric patient is being reviewed. 
and for the product, which always starts on DRG Finder here, I want to make sure to change that to HICPIX slash CPT Finder so that I'm just looking at CPT and HICPIX codes. You'll still have the opportunity to change that at any point. I'm going to hit Add Procedure. And to verify that I'm in the correct area, this is very important. Make sure it says CPT Procedure here. This is for all CPT and HICPIX code search but if you do not verify that you are in the correct section, you could end up with a PCS code and get really confused when you're looking for a CPT coding, especially if you're not familiar with the PCS codes. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and enter an MRA, which is a magnetic resonance angiography. I also wanna look through here because you can see like MRI is suggested. And so you want to make sure and verify what is it that I'm coding for and is this the correct terminology? And yes, it is. Where is it of? And so you'll see this is organized very similar to the CPT code book. And it's the brain. And so I want to look and see if brain is here, which it is not. So instead of going with unspecified, identify where the brain is located. Determine if contrast material is used. And so now I'm just going to kind of read through this and look at all the information that's being given uh, to, to the patient. So all of this is uh, indications from the procedure itself. And the full report is on this page. So I look up and down, make sure I have everything I need here. So there is some information that you might take note of and want to research if you're not familiar, such as certain terminologies like technique. Oftentimes when you pull information like that up, it can tell you specifically if there's anything specific uh, common when they talk about a technique. So if I didn't know um, what they're talking about when they say three-dimensional time of flight multi-slab technique, I might Google that and research to see what is that technique? Does it commonly involve contrast or would it be either with or without contrast or is it important at all to me? This is honestly just talking about um, the technique of how they captured the image, however, not the actual contrast. So uh, your research would tell you that this would not give you anything on contrast. And so after reading through this twice, I don't see any mention of contrast here. And so the question is, was there contrast used or not? And the golden rule in coding, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. And so this patient was without contrast. And the code I come to is very simple, it's very straightforward, 70544, an MRA of the head without contrast materials. Now I can right click on this and I can look at some of the references. And you remember we mentioned about the CPT assistant and some of the coder's desk references. You can see those here. You can look at the specific issue of the CPT assistant on MRA of the head, including an, uh, the coding examples and the MRA uh, changes that are mentioned. This is very similar to uh, the notes that we had in the CPT code book and where you would find information. So if you had that um, access elsewise, there's a lot of different um, encoders and online services that will provide that to you. So that's my that's it for that note. And so I'm ready to move on to my next report. My next report is an x-ray, similar to the x-rays we did earlier. This is of the abdomen, single view. And so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my references here. I'm gonna go to just add procedure because I'm not coding for a system that's doing per patient and nothing about my patient has changed. However, in a real life scenario, you would of course pull up your patient first. I'm gonna type x-ray and I'm gonna hit enter, which then gives me two different options. Of course, this first one is more appropriate because there's nothing about a calculus or di uh, diffraction in my note. 
Notice this first one for image guidance versus different types of x-rays that are done here. Honestly, at this point, there's always so much going on um, when there's a long list like this that if there's something that says spell the type or spell um, where, I'm going to go directly here instead of trying to determine what part of the x-ray this is going to fall under. That's my preference, um, so that's where I go. So I'm going to spell the site or type based off of what I know. All it is is an abdominal x-ray. So I can start typing the word abdomen and I can hit enter to get to anything that pulls up with abdo, which pulled abdomen or abscess in case I had spelled it wrong. I select my abdomen. And then I have different information saying, well, what part of the abdomen? Okay, so I want to go back to my note and look and say, is this just the abdomen exam or is this of the abdomen wall? Because that's one of the options that I have here. Um, there's also information about complete acute abdomen series, number three here. Contrast of abdomen wall, diaphragm, flat plate. And so you can see that there's several different types and I want to verify that in my note. In this case, it's not a series. It's not of the abdomen wall. It's just simply an abdomen exam single view. And I want to read through my findings just to kind of verify that there's nothing that might match one of those other more appropriate or more specified options, which would be more appropriate if we were more specified. From here, I feel fairly confident by fairly, I mean entirely, that this is just simply an abdomen exam or an abdomen x-ray, one, two, or three views. My 3M is freezing, but you can see where the preview of the next section would give us options for one, two, or three views, which will be my next selection in 3M. And so from here, I can select one view, and I can say, no, this is the only x-ray I'm coding, and I get my final results, radiological exam, abdomen, one view, 74018. And I can right click on this and I can review my references if I was curious about anything pertaining to this x-ray. The last one we were going to look at is radiology reported the left foot. So this one, examination of the left foot, pretty simple, severe foot pain, uh, there's two views of the left foot. Comparison is being made with one taken last October. Some of the results that they found. And then the impression. And this is the one where we did not have anything on the directions. And you've no, you may have noticed it's not always in there as to the type of directions. Um, some of us older coders remember when they wanted to know the type of view. So I'm always looking to say, what direction were they coming from? Was it a Blake? Was it anterior, posterior? Was it posterior, anterior? Sometimes that does matter. So here, we're just gonna do a simple x-ray. And again, there's a lot of detail when I go to x-ray, so I'm just gonna spell foot. And I can actually just hit my numbers here on my keyboard instead of my mouse to select one for foot. And I wanna determine, am I looking at skeletal or soft tissue. In this case, when I come back here, they're looking at skeletal, they're looking at the bones and soft tissue swelling. So I wanna look at both of those and see what options come from that. Um, so I can hover over these and I can see radiological exam of the foot, two views or complete versus Radiological exam of the foot, two views are complete. Well, they don't give us much there to go off of. So I'm gonna go with skeletal. And in this case, I want to verify that it was two views, which it is in fact two views, not a complete, which is three or more. Was there stress application for a joint radiography? No, or unspecified, I don't know. 
it was not specified and the golden rule is if it wasn't specified if it wasn't documented it didn't happen are there more x-rays to code no and i'm going to come up to code 73620 now the important thing to remember with all of your radiology coding and all of the examples that we looked at today every single one of these is just the interpretation and report and so it's important to identify modifier 26 for every single one of the uh, scenarios we looked at today. In addition to that, on some of these, you do have indication of sides, such as your left foot, and an additional modifier for LT can be listed. That's all we have for radiology today. There's other videos that we'll be looking at and take some time as you go through this section.